but the Panthers are now 0 for 6 shooting the ball. This is going to be foul number two, I believe, on John Jaeger, so he's in immediate foul trouble. The big size advantage in here with Torrey Morris. He is the biggest player on the floor at 6'10", 280, and he just overpowers Jaeger, who goes 6'8", 195. He's got some muscle in there. Morris shoots under 50% at the line. And he is one of what we want to call the monsters in the middle because look at this combination and what they have done with almost between them Troutman, Lett, and Morris 18 rebounds a game. Yeah, they've done a nice job and again, Ben Holland has done a really a masterful job of weaving people into that middle spot. Morris does a nice job starting out and you'll see Lett and, and Troutman come into the game. They've done a good job collectively. The Panthers 2 of 4 at the free throw line down a pair yet to make their first field goal. They've missed their first Six shots tonight. But they've been the masters of comebacks from double digits leads on the road, haven't they? They really have. Syracuse did it in West Virginia. Shafino gets inside and buries another one. So he's off to a hot start. Tough shots and he's making two. Closely guarded on that one. Good start by West Virginia. Again, they do seem kind of free and easy out there. And for Pitt, this house here, Friendly Fitzgerald, is ready to erupt here tonight. I can feel it. Once the team gets on track offensively, they're going to get something going to the goal when you miss your first six as a team. It's FRO here. Morris kicks it up in the corner. Johnson three rims out. Here's the rebound by Moss. So 0 for 7 now for the Panthers. Inside Rich. Quick turnaround. Nestles in the net for West Virginia. Off to a good start. Leading by six early points. Nice entry pass that time again by Hargett. He's done it twice in this 2-2-1 pressure. The thing about Pitt is they're so confident now. They've won 24 ball games. They believe every time they take the floor, they're going to win. Jerron Brown and Lett are going to check into the game. I think Jerron Brown has been an unsung hero on this pit team all year. He does a lot of things, including rebounding for the club. Night for three. Good. That's the first Panther field goal. It's a three-pointer. And with the streamers coming down, we'll have to stop the game momentarily. Bob Donato will take care of that. 8-5, the Mountaineers. Almost four minutes into the contest, I believe. Brandon Knight with a big basket there just to get hit on the board. And he has really taken charge of this Panther team this year. He's hustling them right now on the floor. He's led them from the point guard position. He is what you call the ultimate competitor. He loves to win. And Ontario Lett has checked into the lineup along with Jerron Brown, who is normally the starter. And the one thing that Lett usually brings is a certain level of excitement when he comes in the game. We'll see what happens tonight. Yeah, I like Lett from the moment I saw him play. He's quick. He's very strong. He's got long arms. And he's really brought a presence and in, in, in a real level of enthusiasm off the boards both ends when he comes into the game. There is Lett. He was a late signee out of Pensacola Junior College. Handling his Sally. Tyrone Sally in there right now. Another freshman. So three freshmen on the court right now for the Mountaineers. Target penetrates, finds Bridge, around the box, is dumped down. The box up off the glass and good. So this is a very nice job by the Mountaineers that time. Good passing, good up fakes, and they end up with that high-quality shot by Mock, who has been their most consistent player that top four all year long. Oh. West Virginia five of seven. Devontis for three off the mark. Sally the rebound. Well, the Panthers ice cold so far. Sally, another pressure for West Virginia. Good young players. And there's another one that we talked about, John Jonathan Harkin. He has got some fine moves. He's playing very well early in this one for the Mountaineers. Seven point ends, a 12 5 start for West Virginia. Just what they needed. Seven to four. They are out rebounding Pittsburgh so far. Done a good job on the defensive board. Pitt needs some action to the goal. West Virginia shooting it so well, they're forcing Pitt to set each time down the floor. Panthers one of seven so far. Here's Brown. Nice. Page drives to the basket. Somebody got a piece of it on the way up. And the jump ball, it'll be the first turnover for Pittsburgh. It's going to give the basketball to the Mountaineers. And they'll have it with 14.36 to go in the half and a seven point lead. Pizza. 
staple of the American male. Oftentimes served dangerously hot. To cool it, they use an age-old technique known as the reverse blow. The rolling rock continues the cooling process. Rolling rock beer, grab a rock. I appreciate your help. No problem. Thanks, Ben. Sure. And call me anytime about that equity loan. Okay. Bye, Martha. Bye. Oh, my. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Thank you. Sure. Oh, no. Oh, you weren't just a good... With four seconds left, lifted the Panthers to an upset of then seventh-ranked Seton Hall. Thomas finished that game with 16 points. And the Pittsburgh Panthers won at 76 to 73. Just one of many great moments in this building. Garrick Thomas was certainly one of the pure shooters that Pitt has had, and he lit that one up, didn't he, beyond the three-point arc. Ben Howland's club behind by seven in the early going. And West Virginia will stay with the three freshmen and the junior college transfer right now with the one senior on the court. Left Brown, Page, Zavosky. And the Brandon Knight out there for Pittsburgh. Remember the last time these two teams played in Morgantown, you know, West Virginia scored the first 10 points of the game. And Pittsburgh still won. Moss, Travis. First turnover for West Virginia. Moved his pivot foot. For Pittsburgh, what they need to do, I'm sure that Ben Holland stressed that at times, they better increase their intensity on the defensive end. West Virginia's been getting good shots. And they've been getting their way, and, and Pitt generates an awful lot of their game off their defense. Well, you talked about one thing at the very beginning, the confidence that this team has been building throughout this entire season. And you can just see it. They do not panic. Reach-in foul on Shafino. Well, you know what does that, John, is when you rack up, you know, 24 Ws. They've come from behind. They've been ahead. They've been in a lot of different situations, but they have found a way to win. And they believe now when they go on the floor that they're going to do just that under Ben Holland's direction. Nice entry pass. And a reverse jam by Lampton. I told you, he brings some excitement to the court. He gets the crowd going. You never want to give a play that inside position on that play under the basket, a lapse on defense, and left with that great finish. Back to Sally, now Hunter. Shot clock inside 20. Game clock at 13.38. We're in the first half tonight. up against Jerron Brown. Fine target, Brandon Knight on him. Nice matchup. Knight gets very quick hands. Had to shoot as the shot clock was running down, and it's going to be three free throws. The foul was on Page. Julius Page wishes he could take that one back. There was a screen up top. You don't want to foul the jump shooter, and that'll be three for Hargett. On the previous play, that entry pass, as you can see, Lett gets inside. And he gets the job done. Beautiful stuff in there. And, and again, he gets that, that great position. Chaz Briggs giving up a lot of weight and strength as he gets the job done. Left off the bench to pick. And Hargett not shooting well from the field at all, but Ronnie, he is a very good free throw shooter. Coming in at 88%. But so what that tells me is shot selection. He's obviously got the stroke. When he takes the time, he concentrates to the line. And I think if he gains more and more experience, he'll find better quality shots and the field goal percentage will go up as well. And the absence of Tim Lyle certainly is, I guess you could look at it one of two ways, couldn't you? It's either helped him because he had to do it all this year or hurt him because he had to do it so quickly, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Put, put right into the fire. But you know what? In the long run, that experience he's getting this year will pay big dividends. Brandon Knight and others have gone through the same experience. This is Brandon Knight with it. Brown. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Jerron Brown as he pushes off against Moss. So it's not going Pittsburgh's way right now. West Virginia is leading by eight. Now yeah, Pitt's been out of sync in their half-court set. It was a good call that time as, as he pushed off with his forearm. I think for Pitt, they just have to raise their whole level of play in this game. They're, they're not quite as high intensity-wise as we're used to seeing them. A steal by Knight. Target trails the play, can't get there. We talked about defense leading to good offense, and Brandon Knight leads the team in steals. That's the kind of play that can really get a team going. So it's dribbling around here, forget about it. And this is what Brandon Knight has done all year long. 
There was a little extra protection for that finger that he injured in the Syracuse game. Another one of their coming from behind victories. Moss against the box. Fade away. Bending, bending, no good. The rebound followed by Sally underneath. Good job by the freshman Tyrone Sally. His first field goal. Chesterfield, Virginia. Sally, another good-looking young player. He just needs to see that frame fill out. He's 6'7", 190, but he's got good skills. So as Moss from Chesterfield, Virginia departs, Knight buries the three. We'll have a new player for the Mountaineers from Chesterfield. Brandon with his second three-pointer. He leads all scores so far with eight early points. Had a career high of 29 in the first meeting. Look at the rebound on the left. Where did he get up on that one? And that was some of the shot selection you talked about from Hargett. A long three-pointer. Page for three. Yes. Here they come. Just like that, Vic. You can feel it. You can sense it. They get contagious with it. Let help them out. But once again, led by Knight and Julius Page, as they've been doing all year. So the back-to-back -back three pointers cut the Mountaineer lead to two with 11 minutes and 40 seconds to play. Let's look at Brandon Knight. He has struggled at times, but he never gives up on this three-point shot. Now, it, defensively, the hands are down. You've got to you've got to respect him out there, get a hand up. And Julius Page shot an air ball out there to start the game. But you know the confidence levels there. Page has played well all year long, nails that one, and suddenly fits right back in this ball game. But Mike went through a, a problem with his leg. He's had a finger injury, and whenever he struggled a little bit, it has been Page who stepped right up to pick up the slack. Yeah, they've been an outstanding backcourt tandem, one of the best in the Big East, and certainly one of the best in the country. And Jerron Brown certainly compliments that backcourt as well as the front court. Beautiful. Again, Cifino, and again he hits. So Cifino with three early field goals. The freshman from Penn Hills, right here in the Pittsburgh area. But he is three for three. It's very well early, guys. He's double figures in the last eight ball games, and you can see his. Oh, what a great pass from Knight to left. Beautiful touch pass up. Brandon Knight let so active. The long arm, he, he can rise. Suddenly, pitch game elevating, and they're still in that man-to-man -man team. You'll see it all night. Rick, that one's blocked by Trotman out of bounds. Touch last by West Virginia. The Panthers will have a chance to tie it up when we come back. It's the Mountaineers by two, nearing the midway point of the first half. Brown, Knight, the bounce pass, beautifully done. In Ontario, let with the finish, bang, bang, bounce pass. Good passing, beats the defense, and that time the bounce pass, which I love seeing that, John, that bounce pass down low, led off the bench, sparking the team, and this is what they've gotten. They've gotten contributions from a number of people this year. That's why they're having such a successful season. And that really has been the story of their season. They are a team and play very much as a team. We're seeing more pressing from West Virginia early on than normal so far tonight. It's done a nice job so far. They've made some baskets on the offensive end. They're mixing up the defense. A little 2-3 zone here that they're matching up out of. Johnson to Brown. Inside and good. His first field goal. We are tied. 19-19. First tie of the night. But with Pitt's patience, what they do is they wear you down defensively and make you play defense for 25 seconds, and that time it broke down inside. They will not go quickly. That doesn't mean they won't break, Ronnie, but they normally in their half court don't go quickly. Take their time, and as a result, that's why they're one of your top defensive teams in the country. 60 points a game is is right up there. I think it's number nine in the nation. So they just work you with that pace. Moss trying to get the loose ball. Won't commit the foul. Alex Khan will check in and back his page for Pittsburgh as Brown goes to the bench. You can't dribble too much around these guys and that time Troutman right there. Moss with the deflection wants to get it back. Pushes and that sometimes is how you pick up the personal foul. Here is Brandon Knight. Here in the Big East, John, you really need balance. Pitt's gotten that. That time they turn it over. But you really can't have just one guy. You've got to have a number of people. And, and again, they've gotten that balance this year as well. That's why the combination of those big men, and two of them are on the floor right now, has really been a plus for Pittsburgh. Target lost it. Brandon Knight has it. Dish inside. Comes up short, but a follow is there for Johnson. And the Panthers have their first lead of the evening. 
and you can see it, people coming into the game, contributing, and they've been doing this all year, so the confidence level is pretty high when it's Troutman and Olette come in the game. You see McCowell getting ready to check in. Here is Schifino, he's had the hot early hand, puts up the baseline jumper, Tom knocks it away, Knight can't hang on, it'll be West Virginia ball, 9.04 to play. Here is Mark McCarroll, the long lean one, 6'10", 2'10", a redshirt freshman. Quick, he can run the floor very well, he's more of a, of a perimeter shooter, but he can also go inside and hit the board. The Panthers have had good mix all year long, and much, much of it has been led by their defense. The Hornets are averaging only 60 points a game, and only one team that scored under 60 has defeated them in the last two years. Schifino snaps the three. <laughs> That's nine for Drew Schifino. Good homecoming so far, huh? He loves it. He loves being in the pit area. He shoots him inside, and that one was from way downtown. Our second lead change of the first half. Here's Johnson, the senior. He's played a lot. The only senior on the team. Nice three. Short. Sally on the weak side had it, but it was knocked out by Ken Johnson. Chris Moss will return for Mountaineer, who lead it by one with 8.28 to play on John Sanders, along with Ron Perry. And there was so much electricity in here prior to the game, and so many cameras, Ron, it was unbelievable. I mean, everybody was taking pictures, constantly taking pictures. Well, you've got the excitement of, of the season that's been in that. You've got returning ball players here tonight, and this has been a great home court. And a Jackson. great steal by Trotman. Six turnovers by West Virginia. Look at the big man work. Page tries to finish it off with three and Javon Trotman trying to make a pitch to be point guard behind Brandon Knight, but he handled the rock pretty well that time. He handled it beautifully. Starting with his steal, took it all the way down. Here's Moss being hounded by Trotman. And Trotman the reach-in foul. A little bit too aggressive. Seven different players have scored already for Pittsburgh, Ronnie, and that tells you what they're all about. We've got a break. In Fitzgerald, Panthers by two. Hungry? You've come to the right place. The home of great brands and great taste. Conagra Food. We set America's table. Still hungry? Conagra has the foods America craves at mealtime, snack time, or any time. Conagra Food. We set America's table. Tire is proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. If you want a family meal, where the value is for real, come on and get it. It's Ponderosa's is all you can eat, steak or shrimp. Get your choice of all the flame grilled steak or golden fried shrimp you can eat for just $8.99. You also get all the appetizers, soups, salads, and desserts you want. It's all you can eat steak or shrimp time at Ponderosa. Come on and get it. Come on and get it. We are back. Panthers have the lead, thanks in no small part to the play by Siobhan Trotman. He's been a catalyst as well off the bench, a real spark. And, and what happens, you come off the bench, you play some good defense, there's the scramble, it leads to good offense. And a nice job there, you see Troutman, he finds Brandon Knight, because when Knight has the ball, you've got to have your heads up. And thinking here, Ben Holland saying, hey, get rid of that ball, get rid of it. He's spin moving, he's doing it, he ditches it over to Page for that nice open three. Let's check out our Hyundai game summary. Four three-pointers by Pittsburgh. That's the reason they've got the lead. The inside game matching up equally right now. Great start for the homecoming. Drew Schifino from Penn Hills. Yep. West Virginia's played well early, led by Schifino. It's a young group on the floor with Target, Schifino, freshman. Sally's been on the floor as well. Another freshman. You've got to give them credit, but they're going to be under a lot of pressure in this game as it wears on with Pitt's defensive pressure. Nice block. Very good give and go that time. Target foul off for his second field goal. We are
are tied. Second time we've been tied tonight. Jerron Brown back on the court. Handles the night. Draws the trap. Gets away. That way you want to get it against pressure. Get it to the middle. Very difficult to trap in the middle. You want sidelines. You want the midcourt places to pin a player with a trap. Shot clock at 11. Brown inside. Comes up short. Into the hands of Sally. Here comes Hargan. One freshman to another. Jonathan Hargan behind his back. Just trying to do too much. And the passers make him pay. Nice. Sally fouls him. Took a little while for that whistle. I thought well, right away when the knight bumped off the ball, you'll see it. Good call. Too much dribbling by Hargett that last time around. I didn't see. You're better off to make a quick move or get rid of it. And then Knight's got great presence. He just gets bumped off the ball there. He tends to have almost eyes to the back of his head when he's dribbling the ball down the court. It's almost like he sees everything that's happening all over the court. Here's Brown again. Does not shoot much from the outside. Scores less than 10 a game, but at 6-4 leads the team in rebounds. He does, he does a little bit of everything. He'll pick the loose balls up. Come get Knight to Zavaska. Hammered by Powell. I'll say. There's some that are questionable, but on that particular case, that's just any debate about that particular foul. Now, Zavaska, unlike many of the Pittsburgh Panthers, is a good to free throw shooter. So many, so many good things happen when you penetrate it. Another thing Mike does, he's always getting himself into the lane. You can see John and his teammates have their hands ready because otherwise you could get drilled in the chest with a pass. Briggs and Jaeger will return to the Mountaineer lineup right now. In the lineup for the Mountaineers, number two, Jazz Briggs, and number 22, Adam Sally goes to the bench. Jager. Pittsburgh leading by one. Just over six and a half left in the first half. Comes up short on number two. And all three of the Panthers who shot free throws tonight are one for two. Target to Stefano. Off to a great start tonight. Here's Jaeger. Jaeger is a terrific shooter running when he gets it going. Sometimes he's not greedy enough. He doesn't shoot enough. He needs some space as well. And Sharon Brown won't give you a lot of opening. There's a steal by Knight. He's got Stefano to beat. Page with him. And the push-off foul is called on Stefano. That'll be his second. He almost made a great recovery that time. And he really did. It's a tough read. The Knight set him up. A little bit of a push on the hip. He really he made a good jab step. But without that touch, did a great job defensively. And this is where the fans really try to get behind Brandon because he struggles shooting free throws. Which is not good as many times as he's going to go to the line. See? The rousing fear that he gets when he makes one. <laughs> Well, he, he does so many things so well. And now, he, he shoots the ball very well from two-point land. He can stroke it. I think sometimes from the line, probably confidence-wise, he gets himself thinking too much, which causes him some problems. And he makes one out of two. So the pattern continues for the Pittsburgh free throw shooters. They've all made one out of two. Here's Mark, the Jaeger. Cifino cut off by Knight. Tried to go inside, threw it away. Too quick that time. Get it to the wing and then see if you can get the entry pass. Plenty of time to work with. Nice. Went off somebody's body. Brown got it. But Jaeger touched the last, so Pittsburgh will keep it. What's the turnover situation right now with the Panthers up by two? Watch it, watch it. It is 9-2. Page, a long three. Bending, no good. But Morris there with an offensive rebound and put back. He'll go to the line. Just too big. That's a great job by Morris. He gets it, he holds it up high, he gathers himself, which is the key right there, and then he just powers the ball back up. Watch what I mean here. Now he catches it, he's in traffic. Right here he gathers himself, and then he just regains his control and just powers through people at 280 pounds. That's a strong finish inside. And because of that size, Alex Khan is going to come back into the game. And he misses the free throw. Zavaskis tapped it out of bounds, but it went off the arm of Mark. So the Panthers can get keep it here. Khan back in the lineup. Moss will go to the bench. The senior playing his final game. This will also be the final game for John Oliver, another of the Mountaineer seniors. Khan from the Czech Republic. 
Fourth Union Academy, the junior center. He's 7 1 2 40. 2 3 zone once again by West Virginia. Trying to keep it out of the lane area and force outside jump shot. Now, not good news for West Virginia. You've got to box out out of the zone. Morris against Cobb. Puts up the shot. It's blocked out of bounds. <laughs> Biggest lead of the first half. The six-point edge for Pittsburgh. The Mountaineers have been up by as many as eight. Georgetown, a win over Rutgers at home in their finale. Miami beating Virginia Tech at home. And Notre Dame over Providence. Those are the finals from this afternoon. And we'll see how that affects the bracket in the Big East Championship at halftime in our ESPN Fox halftime report. Mike Gray's done a very nice job with the fight yeah. marriage for Notre Dame. That's their 20th win, John. And they look like a, a very sure bet, in my opinion, right now for the big dance as well. That's the travel. And when you lose the player of the year in Troy Murphy, and you pick up an outstanding freshman who's probably going to be the newcomer of the year in the conference, Chris Thomas. Yeah, he's been outstanding. Thomas has really been the guy that's lifted them up. Mike's done a great job with the team. Mike Gray, who came over from Delaware two years ago. And they were did a little one team that's given hits of problems this year. Beat Peter Price twice. Half of their losses. Briggs, big line, too strong. There's Brown. And he goes up. He controls those rebounds. Here's Knight. He'll shoot a three. Off the mark. Khan picks it back. Page gets it. Panthers have a fresh spot. But not for long. This time, Briggs, the rebound. Stolen by you know who, number four, Jerron Brown. Yeah, because Tate took a quick shot. You normally won't see a quick shot like that one on the second chance. This is more typical. Get it out, work the clock, and now it gets frustrating if you're on defense. West Virginia's got to block out and grab some of these defensive boards. I mentioned the Panthers' success holding teams under 60. They're 26 and 1 when they do that. Brown got inside but stepped out of bounds. He was on the baseline. Left will return along with Chad Johnson for Pittsburgh. The Panthers have their biggest lead of the night. It's just the same old thing. I need adventure, excitement. I'm suffocating. All he did was score 40 points, eight three pointers. And he went eight for eight in the second half. How about that? Remember that game well, John. He just lit it up. He had it going. Ben Howard wouldn't mind seeing someone go for 40. But you know what? This year's edition, you don't see someone go no. for 40. You tend to see, you know, four and sometimes even five guys drop 10 plus on the board and hold the opposition to 60 or below. That's been the formula for success. Well, the Mountaineers in their last two games have had five players in double figures, and they've lost both games. It's been a series of losing streaks for West Virginia. They had the nine-game losing streak early. They now drop eight straight. Shafino keeps shooting that one short. The tie got the rebound and then is fouled by Ontario Lett. It's a good call, Lett. I think Lett felt that Khan went over his back out of him. You're probably right, right, yeah. He came back at him. He called it the fourth team foul as Hargis was only on the bench briefly. He's back on as Shafino. We'll go back to the bench. As you've seen tonight, West Virginia, even though they've been getting some balanced points, with the young players they have, they're prone to turn it over, John, and they have been just, just okay on the boards. They're just a push every game. They're not leading on the backboards. Hewitt could not hang on as he got inside. Jay Hewitt, who loves to go to the basket, turns it over for the 10th time here in the first half. Brown to the bench, and Brandon Knight is back on for the Panthers, looking for their 25th win of the year. Back in 1974, that was the Billy Knight era. They finished 25 and four. And the last time they won 25 games in a season was 86, 87. They went 25 and eight that year. But I think a lot of people think that 74 team was probably a better team. And this one might outshine them all. Too strong for Lex, but Tom could not hang on like to see that bounce pass into the low post. The lob pass, you can have problems with the quickness of a lot of the players. Julius Cage with that 
yellow headband. Well, I'll tell you what, he can really rise to a great defense. A lot of early turnovers by West Virginia, and there are now 2 minutes 51 seconds to play, and Pittsburgh's been sitting on this 30-24 lead for a while now. And the shot clock had been reset to 35, and there was no change of possession, so that means it goes back to 12. Seems like just about every game, there's a little bit of confusion over that shot clock, but the officials take the time and get it right. That one clangs out. Hewitt has the rebound. Mountaineers do not have the numbers, though. That won't bother Hargett. Off the mark with a three. And there's that shot selection. Third time, Ronnie, he's done that in the first half. Well, oh, he was open on that one. I thought he could have got another step closer. Zavoska thought he had a three lined up and comes up empty. He is 0 for 3. So Sally will try a 3 and rattles it in. Iron Sally gets the 3. That's just his sixth three-pointer of the season, and Ben Holland will take his first half 30-second timeout. Of the year in the Vicky's Conference in the league. They are some outstanding ones. We'll check out their training bracket. West Virginia, meantime, has not scored since the 7.35. They've got over five minutes without scoring. Ben Howland calls this timeout, John. I'm almost positive. We were in that huddle right there. He's saying, don't let yourself get caught in this up and down type game. That was a really quick exchange. Three point shots both ways. Right. Settles him down and says, be patient. Let's take this thing into the locker room and try to build on the lead. Well, the good news, though, for West Virginia is Sally Street cuts the lead in half. It's now a 30 to 27 margin. Just over two to play. Javon Trotman. Leeds Johnson. West Virginia's done a good job. You got six Joe Fieldhouse ready to erupt at all times. Packed out, hit on a roll, but they're right in this ballgame. Knight looking for Johnson finds it. Beautiful pass again by Knight. We talked about him as the catalyst, and he just makes it happen. Target inside. That's an offensive foul ball on break. That'll be number two on Chad. Well, the Panthers will get it back with a minute 44 to play. And Chris Moss, who's been on the bench quite a bit of this first half, Ronnie, will check back in. Now they need Moss on the floor. He's he's the team's leading scorer. He's got four points in the first half, and they need him to get touches because he's very tough to stop inside. Brandon Knight credited so far with four assists in the game. He has nine points to lead the scoring for his team. And he averages less than 16 a game, and he leads the scoring. And he also has a couple of steals and a few rebounds as well. So he's, he's his usual self. Here. Typical lead. Yeah, exactly. Runs the show. Hands to Troutman. Shot clock at 10. Knight sneaks inside. And then lost it. Target gets it back. So Knight turns it over. Moss. In front of Troutman, comes up short. Scramble for the rebound, and Khan is fouled. That'll be number two on Ontario left. Khan's done a pretty nice job, yeah. seventh footer. Mixes it up, he runs the floor. Thank you from the Czech Republic. He did a good job that time in traffic to come up with that ball. Well, listen to this number. The Panthers, off the West Virginia turnovers, have 15 points. The Mountaineers might get their first right here. And do. The Vasquez comes back. Troutman goes back to the Panther bench. West Virginia has been perfect at the line. Four out of four. Remember, they had the three by Hargett when he was fouled shooting a three. And Khan showed a little he's played. This is only his 11th free throw attempt of the season. And he has made seven. Gets both of them here. Cuts the lead to three with 108 to play in the half. Jerron Brown will bring it in for Pittsburgh. There's the number we just spoke about. Now the reason the game's as close as it is is Pitt really hasn't, you know, shot the ball all that well in the first half. West Virginia's gotten off to a good start. The zone defense is pretty effective, limiting Pitt from a lot of easy baskets inside, so they're right in the ball game. And after the game is over, they're hanging the championship banner for the West Division of the Big East, their first championship since 88. Lett works his way inside. Tip try won't go. Brown got a piece of it, and Lett keeps it alive. 
That's great hustle, and we see Pitt do, do that a few times here in the first half, second and third effort at the basketball. Just a one second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. So night will wind it down. The Panthers will be content to take a slim lead into the locker room at halftime. To be a momentum getter if you can get one before intermission. That's interesting. Ben Holland, Bobby Donato turns. And it is not a call timeout on Pittsburgh. That's good officiating. He thought that it was, and then he recorrects himself. There's still 10 seconds left. Look for Brandon Knight to penetrate. He'd be the guy they want with the ball, making something happen. Have your hands ready if you're a teammate. Five on the shot clock. Knight tried to lean in and is going to go to the line. He'll shoot two, just like that. Virginia, the foul is on three, Jonathan, Jonathan Hargan. Picks up his first. And the Panthers so far at the line, just four of nine. But Ronnie, unfortunately for them, that's the norm. Now, you look at their record, you say, well, it hasn't hurt them so far. But it might someday. Well, that's right. You can win in the Big East Tournament, John, and then the NCAA Tournament. Close games, tough games. And you've got to try to make your free throws because that can be the differential in those type of ball games. Double figures for Brandon. He has 10. Four seconds left in the half. Knight makes two. And he's having a big night at the line. He's made three out of four. There's some pressure. See if West Virginia can get one off. Hewitt at the buzzer. And it's a five-point Panther lead at halftime. The ESPN Plus halftime report is coming up with Knight leading the way. The Panthers go to the locker room with the lead. They're up by five. The senior Johnson enjoying every moment. Back to Pittsburgh and our ESPN Plus halftime report. Pittsburgh and West Virginia taking a break right now. And as we begin our halftime by checking out tonight, next week and in the west of course the panthers who were picked to finish sixth wind up as the champions of that division syracuse has sagged a little of late yes they have they do have the 20 in their nine and six overall they'll go to the big dance but they're not doing very well right now notre dame is finishing up strong as his georgetown and rutgers hoping for that late season role in new york as of right now the pairings the standings for the ConAgra Foods, Big East Championship. You'll see the buys going to Pittsburgh, Miami, UConn, and Notre Dame. And that's one of the keys, Ronnie, is to get that buy. It really is. And those four teams are well positioned. You've got to really go on a good roll if you're in the, the opening Wednesday game to run the table. But this is a year where you're going to see upsets. Anyone could come away with it. I certainly like Connecticut and Pittsburgh's chances, given the way they're playing late in the year and all year, for that matter. There are some of the former greats who have come back to enjoy this special night we've got more to come highlights and stats from the opening 20 minutes right after this field ice ronnie and i've been here many times and it's kind of a treat i think to be here for the last game don't you it really is john it's been uh, a lot of fun coming here over the years and to see all the former players here the energy in the uh fitzgerald field house is really exciting tonight where there's charles smith Clyde vaughn on and on they're all here but let's look at the stats and west virginia shooting the basketball better than pittsburgh in the first half and that's kept them in the game. pittsburgh they'll keep coming at you in waves but we've got ourselves a good ball game right now well, you look at the difference for Pittsburgh this year. Last year, they had to win their way into that championship game. Finally, in the fourth game, they came up short against BC. Ben Howland's team will go into New York, certainly, as one of the favorites in the tournament. They absolutely will, but he knows every game will be a battle at Madison Square Garden, but it's certainly nice to not have to play on Wednesday, get a workout in. It's very tough to run the table from Wednesday all the way to Saturday. It's a what work competition. It's never been done. That's how tough it is. It's unbelievable. Here's Jerron Brown with a three. Good. Jerron Brown with a three. That's only his fourth three-pointer of the entire season. That's why we talked about him contributing in so many different ways. To shoot it, go inside, and he's also playing great defense tonight on Jaeger. Moss battles his way inside but misses. Here comes Knight. Panthers have numbers. Three on one. Knight gives it up to Page. So unselfish. Run the ball with Brandon Knight. Good kid, you'll get it. 
That's an offensive foul on Moss. And Chris Moss is not having a good night in his final college game. Panthers by 10. Beautiful dish last time. Draw the defense, and that time, have your hands ready as Brandon Knight got right in there, got it over to his backward mate, and he was looking for the ball. Julius Page. Well, Page, of course, is known for those highlight jams that he can produce, and most of them come off passes from Brandon Knight. That one happened a little too quickly for the stuff. They went too far from the for three. Gutter. That's off the mark, and there's Moss with the rebound. See, target. Here come the Mountaineers. Reach in foul called on Brandon Knight, his first. And the Mountaineers are trying to answer quickly. They are down by 10. It was just the reverse. First time these two teams played. It was West Virginia back on the 16th of February that had the big lead before the Panthers came back to win by 10. Panthers, by the way, Ronnie, had a perfect February. Did not lose a game. Went 6-0. Moss alone. That time he got away from the box. Well, they lost too many all year when you think of the four, but they're running the table at the right time. Nice look that time to Moss. West Virginia needs more action going to the goal. They're not forcing Pitt into an up foul situation. Knight winds up with Briggs defending. Finds Page for three. Comes crashing down the baseline and lays it in. Well, double figures for Julius a dozen. Made that one look easy, John. The up fake and then forget about it. Target for three and he buries it. Target gets his first three. That's the fourth time in this game he's come out with a quick three-pointer, but the first one that he has made. 41-34. The lead is seven. Panthers will take some time. 20 on the shot clock. It's for three of four so far this half. The Boston has scored just one point tonight. Morris. Back to Zavosky, shot clock at five. Page left to shoot a three. And does and makes it, just like that. As the shot clock is winding down, Page has seven points early on in the second half, and the Panthers go up by 10 again. Julius Page is explosive. The left-handed can fill it up. He plays great defense as well. That's a consistency. That'll be goaltending, and that one wasn't going to go. Well, that's not a good decision that time by Corey Morris. Leave it alone. Give it a chance to miss, but once you do that, falls on its downward flight. Takes it away. That's a goaltend. Good call, but it looked like it was going to fall just a bit short. Well, once again, the Mountaineers go with a lineup that features three freshmen out there. Now they're getting great experience. Cusino, Hargett, Sally, but also tough to go against the veteran club, although some young players on pitch team, but they're on a roll. Nice block. Oh, some body as well. Enough body that is foul number two on Tyrone Sally, and it'll put Zavoskis at the line, where he has his only one point tonight. Sally's just 190 pounds, and you can see Zavoskis just wide over his side. Zavoskis, the guy, we haven't his name much then, but another role player who just plays steady defense. He doesn't need a lot of shots. But he can also come up big, and he's good at the line for the Panthers. He is. He's over 80%. He and Julius Page are the best free throw shooters on this team. The box, this is just his second point tonight. And it is a special night. This place has been alive and electric since about 5.30 this afternoon. Yeah, they were filling in, John, and it is definitely a packed house. Of course, this game was originally scheduled to be played at 2 o'clock. And they moved it to 7.00. by Knight, gets it back, keeps it alive. There's a three by Jonathan Hargett, his second of the second half. He's in double figures with 11. Now you can see why people are excited about Hargett. He can fill it, he can handle it. Exciting. Zavoskis for three, bending off. Brown inside, had a piece of it, but Sally wins that battle. One of the few, usually if he's there, Ryan, he'll win that ball. So Hargett again for three. Morris with his strength gets it back. Page from Knight inside, puts it up good. Nine points in the second half for Page. He's got 17, and he has taken over offensively. Boy, he's quick. And, and Pitt showing you that they can run if they have numbers. They'll take it right to the goal. Shafino. That one was blocked by Zabaskis, but goes out of bounds off the hands of Brown and Moore. Here comes West. Here comes the senior, Chad Johnson, back. Jaeger will return for the Mountaineers. The Panthers shooting much better, on to start the second half than they did in the first half. 
Well, they're getting it to the goal in transition, and when you do that, your percentages tend to go up as they open this lead up in more of an up-tempo second half. This is Briggs, who played pretty well in the first half. Getting the start. Garnett, of course, has been suspended from the team, as has the veteran shooter, Lionel Armstead. There's a steal by Ontario left. Look out here. Beats Johnson, he stepped out of bounds, very traveled. You can just see the wheels turning. Ontario trying to decide, what am I going to do with this ball? <laughs> Handling the rock. He didn't want to have it right there as the Panthers lead by nine. Been on fire, John. He's got nine points in the second half already, and he's been dynamite. Ben Holland over there talking to his troops. They've really picked the pace up in this game. You see the action in there. All over the backboard. Pitt comes away with it. And Julius Page with the drive off the transition. And he is on a roll right now. He's making threes. He's pumping to the basket. The left-hander shows you some of his offensive moves. He's very quick. Julius Page has three three-pointers so far in the game. Jaeger outside. And they're trying to... Keep it close. Moss leans in and then gets the roll and draws the foul. Number two on, or excuse me, number one on Donato Sabasco. Haven't seen much of that tonight by the Mountaineers. And that's where you get it inside, get it to Moss, get him involved, stop the clock, and get yourself to the line. They've been taking more jump shots this season. And a miss by Moss at the line. In mind that Pittsburgh team was based around two different guys last year, Ricardo Greer and Isaac Hawkins. It seems funny this year, doesn't it? Without Ricardo Greer, he was here. Yeah, seems for a while, huh? Seemed like about 10 years he was playing on this team. Terrific and he was player. an outstanding player. Jaeger on the wing, tries to go baseline. Hargett for three, and he hits another one. So Hargett with three three-pointers in the second half. Now has 14, and all of a sudden, it's a four-point game. The Mountaineers are hanging around. Nice job by Hargett, and when he gets the look and he sets, there's nothing wrong with his shooting from the outside, he finds the net. Well, you mentioned he had 26 in the first meeting between these two teams. That's just two off his freshman high of 28. West Virginia stays with that 2-3 zone. Got to box out out of it, though. It's, it's easy to not box out of a zone. You got to find someone when the shot goes. And the shot clock down. Zavoskis gives it back to Page for three. Yes! He is on fire. Zavoskis passed that shot, and Page has 20 points, just one away from a career high. That's a great example. Zavoskis with three points in the game, very unselfish, gives it to the hot hand. Excellent decision. Here's Jaeger. Sally's back on the court. For Drew Catlett, who is coaching the team in the absence of Dale Catlett, whose career will end tonight. What an outstanding career it's been. Target gets inside and left, slaps it away. And then the foul is going to go on Josh Yeager. He'll pick up number three. John Gale Catholic, 24 years, the winningest coach in Mountaineer history with 439 W's. A lot of great, great career ball games. Coached by Gale Catlett. This is the walk right there by Ontario Let Usually the second man in gets the rejection. The first guy slows him down. A little pressure by West Virginia. They've done this tonight, the 2-2-1, two -two just to... Low pit bringing the ball up the court. You don't have to slow them down too much. <laughs> right. Take their time anyway. Page is five for five in the second half, and that's one of the rare turnovers tonight by Pittsburgh. And it winds up in a brick stuff up to my feet, so Chad Briggs at six points. Beautiful dish by Hargy. He's showing some fine moves out there. That was a good no-look job going to his left, passing to the right. Well, I think Jonathan Hargit maybe inspired just a bit by the player Brandon Knight who's been such a factor with his team. Coppin gets inside and uses his power to put it up and in. I'll say he went right through people, and you can see the combined effort of people inside by Pitt tonight. Another turnover. And here comes Johnson, the senior. And a 30-second timeout will be called. Hargett is down on the court. Back at the other end, we'll take a timeout along with the two teams. Pittsburgh leading. Steele, he just outpaces West Virginia down the floor. The lone senior comes up with it right here and forget about it. He's saying, I want this one. I'm going to put that two-handed stuff down for the 
home crowd tonight. Let's take a look at Shooting the Rock. Brought to you by Rolling Rock. Grab a rock. You can see Pittsburgh has improved in the second half. We're going to have a special guest joining us here in the second half. As Steve Peterson, the director of athletics at the University of Pittsburgh, will be alongside shortly. And we'll talk about what a great year it's been and the future for the Panthers, which is certainly bright, whether it be this year or down the road. West Virginia handles outside. This is Hewitt. He'll shoot a three. Comes right back out and into the hands of Javon Troutman. Looks for help. Finds it with Jerron Brown. 12.45 to play. Pittsburgh's lead is nine. They've been up by ten. That's a worry that's too many times too far. Steve Peterson joins us, the director of athletics here. First of all, congratulations. Uh, you start at the end of football season, right through basketball season. You've been having a pretty good time. Well, well, the last four months have been exciting around here, you know, starting with the, the football team getting underway, winning six straight, including the Tangerine Bowl. And, of course, the basketball team has been on a tear all season long. It's been they, fabulous. They have been tremendous. We should point out that the new Peterson event center that's going to open here next year. That's spelled with a T, not a D like your name. But uh, <laughs> congratulations and tell us about the progress of that facility. Well, it's, it's so exciting. I just took our commissioner, Mike Trangizi, by there tonight. And, and uh, the building will be open the end of April for our graduation for the university. That'll be the first official event. But the building is in great shape. It's exciting. We took all of our former players through there today, and they were thrilled. I'll bet. And that was a tremendous ceremony you had at halftime. Troutman is found as he gets inside. It must have been a thrill for you to see all these great names come back to the University of Pittsburgh. Well, you know, we have a tremendous history in basketball and a, and a tremendous group of alums. And this is really the first great effort I think we've made to reach out to them. And, uh, and they've been wonderful. What a terrific group of people. And, and we're so glad they came back. It was great to see them all, Steve. At, uh, you know, mid-court, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. It brings back the tradition. And what a great way to do it here. It's the last night at uh, Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, we've had so many great ball games over the years. Well, it's, it's neat, you know, and the, one of the fun things, we had a big dinner last night for all the players, and to hear them talk about their memories of great games and exciting things, and, and uh, you know, it's almost like they relived it again. And <laughs> it's even what, better over time, Oh, though. yeah, and that's why we put them, too, back in the jerseys. You know, I said that every player likes to pull on the jersey one last time. And they did parade those jerseys at halftime. Panthers have their biggest lead of night, up at 11. And I know that you and uh, the rest of the staff, uh, you're to be congratulated, of course, on Ben Howland. There were people that wondered about him and his credentials coming in, but he's done a terrific job for you, Coach. Ben's done a fabulous job. He's a tremendous coach. He's a tremendous person. And, uh, and I, I'm so pleased with what he put together, not just in terms of the win, but not. Much better than that. <laughs> but the Panthers by 13. And Drew Cantler will call time, a 30 second timeout. But listen to these crowds. Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, we had we had our students stay in droves. This is spring break. They're all gone. They're supposed to be down in Florida and, and they're having a ball. Well, there's nothing like winning, Steve. And this team early on got the wins going. You can see the confidence. And right now, when they take the floor with plays like this one, Knight over to Brown, you can sense their confidence level. You know, they feel like they go on the court, they can't be beat. The only thing I would ever fault this team for is sometimes they make one too many passes, being so unselfish and trying to make it, trying to make this exactly what you'd like. I, I think our crowd loves their unselfish play more than any other trait that, that uh, this team has. And, and they're the greatest group of young men. They're the most fun kids I've ever been around. And obviously the fans have responded. This is your seventh consecutive sellout. The good news is when you have sellouts next year, there'll be more people in the building, right? <laughs> Absolutely. We'll be at 12,500 people. And, uh, you know, we're turning away thousands of these games. I'm sure there's people watching on TV right now who tried to get tickets and can't. And, uh, and I hope that we get to the point where we're turning away thousands in the new building, too. Well, we wish you the best of success the rest of this year and, of course, looking to the future. Thanks for joining us, Steve. It's always a pleasure to see you. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for you Steve. guys for everything. 13-point lead. Remember, the Mountaineers had climbed back to within four, and now the Panthers have stretched it out once again. So Steve Peterson, the director of athletics at the University of Pittsburgh, and what a great job he's done, huh? He's done a great job, and, you know, you've got to have leadership from the top, John, to have this kind of success in terms of the coaches that you have running the program. You've got the chemistry out there on the floor, of course, but, you know, Steve Peterson believes in Ben Howland. He got him here. The football's been doing a great job. 
And I'll tell you one thing, John, there's nothing like winning. It really breeds a lot of enthusiasm. It's 59-48, Pittsburgh in control. Defense have made this the hottest ticket in town, but the best is yet to come as the Panthers move to their new home in the Peterson Event Center. Now you can be one of the first to stake your claim to a great seat in this premier college basketball arena. Call now to see the Event Center for yourself and select your seats for the upcoming season. Call for an appointment to select your seats in the Peterson Event Center, the new home of Pittsburgh Panthers basketball. Benny, what are you doing? Now, they really built it up in this second half with some good defense and some transition basketball. Jonathan Hargit can't get this one to go. Check out Lett off the backboard. Just getting it done on Terry Lett. Get it to Brandon Knight. Get it to your point guard. And then Jerron Brown with the finish. And this is a terrific play, and it is our BMW ultimate drive of the game. We've seen a lot of this, all led by number 20. Yeah, he just gets it going. Get him the ball. Let him create. Let him tell you what the defense is going to do, and make sure if you run the floor, have your hands ready. Full court pressure, all out pressure this time by West Virginia, and the Panthers handle it. Now they've got numbers three on two. Troutman scoops it up and in off a nice feed. That's eight for Javon Troutman. Remember, he's just a redshirt freshman. There are several on this team. Troutman is one. Mark McCarroll is on the court. Is also a redshirt freshman. Riggs outside. Pittsburgh has matched its biggest lead of the night right into the hands of Brandon Knight. Four on two, Pittsburgh. Make it five on three now. Well, they had numbers that time, but nothing quite opened up, and Knight didn't force it. Knight gets inside, finds Brown outside. It was Brown getting that three-pointer to start the second half that kind of ignited Pittsburgh. Yeah, really. Good. He's he's got got a Not a good dish. How about Knight, John? He's just, he's just setting people up left and right right now. It is a double-double for Brandon Knight with 11 points and 10 assists. Trotman a steal. Plus, Javon Trotman's having a heck of a night. He really is. Well, he's running the floor. And one of the nice things, if you play with a guy like Knight, if you run, you're going to get it. Johnson thought about it. Instead, goes to Trotman. And he's fouled on the play by Briggs. And that'll be the third on Chaz Briggs. Pittsburgh lead the biggest it's been this evening at 15. Khan, Shafino, Yeager returning for West Virginia. Julius Page checks back for the Panthers. Well, it's difficult if you're West Virginia. In front of this enthusiastic crowd on the Pitt campus, you've only had one victory in Big East play, and you just try to play as hard as you can. They play very well in the first half. Right now, they've got to reach back and just hang tough right now with some defense. Well, that victory into the nine-game losing streak, and it's been followed up by an eight-game losing streak. How about a three for Brandon Knight? His first points in the second half. Third three-pointer this evening. He's got 14, and the Panthers' lead is up to 18. But you get a sense of how well the Panthers play together. They find the open man. They work the basketball, and they really do play as a unit. And Tom can't get rid of it momentarily. Finally does to Shafino, who had a good first half, but hasn't played much and hasn't scored in the second. You know, Hargett has not been afraid to launch the threes. It's getting away from the Mountaineers. It really is. They're not getting much inside right now. Chris Moss is on the bench. Look for Drew Catlett to bring him back in. And right now, Pitts in complete command. If they have the break, they run. If not, this is typical. They'll work some clock. Got clock at 15. Tried to go to Trapman. Bounces off the foot of Khan out of bounds. 14 on the shot clock. The Panthers were under 40% in the first half. And here in the second half, Ronnie, they're 12 of 16. How about that? Now they've been just getting great shots, John. They begin layups. They're beginning drive. And then they begin getting open shots and hitting them. That includes four three-pointers in the second half as Hargett goes to the Mountaineer bench. Just over nine to play. I think they're going to have a little party here at Fitzgerald tonight. As a matter of fact, I know they are because after the game, they're going to raise that championship banner. McCarroll tried to go up and dunk it in his foul. Foul is on Khan. That's number two on him. And Mark McCarroll, another of the redshirt freshmen, will go to the line. 
And if he can make a point, he'll be the ninth player to score for Pittsburgh, and everybody who's played in the game has scored for the Panthers. There's the balance, John. I mean, they, they, they just distribute the basketball. People come into the game and get involved. Of course, they may not get that point. He's only a 39% free throw shooter. Exactly nine to play. Well, you've you got the Big East tournament coming up, John, you know, next week. So it starts on Wednesday. And this is an important game for Pitt to continue to play well because then you've got a few days off and then you, not off, but for practice, and then you've got the tournament game. And for West Virginia, just play it out. Play as hard as you can here for the final eight plus minutes of this ball game. It's been almost five minutes since the Mountaineers have scored a basket. The Panthers, in the meantime, have opened up a huge lead of 19. Cuspino ends that run. The double fingers of 11. That's the uh, ninth consecutive game for Shafino. Good looking young player. The Panthers now will use some clock with eight and a half to go. They'll have that first round by. The team plans to go to New York on Tuesday because they've got the Big East banquet. The awards will be handed out. It is a two for Brown. He's got nine. That's just about his season average. But none bigger than that three he hit to start the second half. Kind of ignited his team. That was a big one. How about the basket he got at Georgetown this year? That game winner. Right. He's come up with some big plays. It's the weak side offensive rebound and put back. Mountaineers turn it over. Chris Moss checking back in. The 19-point lead for Pittsburgh. Closest the Mountaineers have been in the second half is four. And that's when the Panthers really opened it up. John, this Pittsburgh team reminds me a lot of Boston College from a year ago. BC went 27-5. and five. They came out of the Big East tournament victorious against Pitt in that finale. And they had a team that had great chemistry, a lot like this Pitt team. Page for three. Yeah, he's on fire in the second half. Julius Page with 23. It is a career high for Julius Page. And I should mention the night with 13 assists is just three away from his career high. It's been an unbelievable night for the Panthers. And fittingly, I guess. Knight will pick up his second foul. But it would turn out this way on the night they closed to Cheryl Field. You know what's interesting, John, is the team started off cold, but they really heat it up, up by 22 now at Fitzgerald. And a bad dog. Check it out. <laughs> Jerome Lane sets it down, and the backboard shatters with the force of that stuff. That was the year they finished 24 and 7. Charles Smith, of course, part of that very successful era. As we get ready to restart, let's take a look at our best play of the game. Brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Let's check it out. When Brandon Knight has just been all over the play, and that was Julius Page finishing off with that best play of the game. And, that, and that's typical of the way Pitt has played. They've taken the break opportunities when they've been there. Knight with a rebound off the Jaeger miss. And Josh has struggled tonight, has not scored. It's a 22-point Pittsburgh lead. Backdoor McCarroll. How about that? At 14 assists now. Unbelievable. He's just dishing that basketball left and right. Get your hands ready. It is a 24-point lead. And the Mountaineers are going to finish 1-15 in, in Gail Catlett's final season as the coach in the Big East. Chapino falls down, but gets it to Kong. He's tied up, taken away by Page. And the possession arrow will keep it in the hands of the Mountaineers. Page is trying to call timeout. Don't know if he got it in time. Apparently not. The Mountaineers will inbound. In a lot of plays this year, John, where you get that tie up and a guy calling timeout. I think you've got to have great possession of the basketball to get the timeout on that play. Good call that time. Just get possession to the Mountaineers. Let's see if Torrey Morris is going to pick up his first foul. We're about to be joined by the commissioner of the Big East Conference. Mike Trangizi is joining us. And Mike, great to have you here on the final night at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Uh, it's kind of really been a special evening for Pittsburgh, hasn't it? Well, so many great memories in this building, and it's now it's being capped off with... Uh, such a special year for them. The Panthers have played great this entire season. Shafino has that one blocked. Moss can't tip it in. And the ball comes loose. So let's talk about New York next week. 
I think you're set for about as exciting a tournament as I could imagine. Organized chaos, I think, John. <laughs> hey, Mike, you know, I've seen the games for a lot of years now, and it really feels this year like, you know, maybe the best, best balance we've seen. I mean, every game seems like it can go either way. Of course, this game, you've got a very strong pitch team, but the balance has been fantastic this year, which sets the table for New York. Well, I think there's eight teams who think they can still get in the tournament, and so much uh, that's going to be riding on those Wednesday and uh, Thursday games. Plus, the other thing, Ronnie, is uh, our two best teams all year have been pitched Connecticut, and they haven't played. And, uh, you know, you have the possibility that they could play. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of negatives to everybody not playing each other. But one of the positives is bringing two teams together that maybe haven't squared off. I think people are, would, would like to see these two teams play against each other. They're so very different, but they're both good in their own way, as you know. That could, that could make for a very interesting finish. And I think in some ways, Mike, both have been a little bit surprising. We know the passes have been, and I'm not sure anybody thought that the Huskies were going to be this good this quick for the young team. Well, you know, Ben has a great player in Brandon Knight. Jim has a great player in Karan Butler. And uh, they're both such great coaches. And, and they both are such sticklers for defending. And, and both of these teams consistently, I thought, night in and night out defended. And, you know, some nights you, your offense isn't quite good enough and you lose. But if you, you defend every night, you're going to win a lot of games. Well, that's what's happened with Pittsburgh. But let's move to the next tournament, the one that comes up after the Conagra Foods 2002 Big East <laughs> Championship. How many people do you, how many teams do you think are going to make the tournament? Do you have a feel? Well, if I, if I knew the outcome of the games uh, uh, <laughs> tomorrow, I, I, I'd have a better feel. You know, I'd like to think that we have six teams right there, right there, and maybe seven. Um, you know, somebody may have to win a game in the tournament. That remains to be seen. But uh, uh, we've got teams that not only have won the right kind of games in the league, but they've also gotten good non-conference wins. And, and that's what the tournament committee's looking for. Well, Pittsburgh winning at Ohio State. There was none bigger than Villanova beating UCLA, right? And, and you know, Villanova uh, is an NIT team with, uh, but Jay's done a great job with them, and they've got a bright future. They really do. They, how about their recruiting class? Huh? Well, Jay is someone I've known since he's with uh, Rowley as an assistant, and uh, we're thrilled to have him in the league. Mike, it feels like in the NCAA tournament, the competition's been so intense in league play this year that teams are really going to, I think, have some terrific success in the big dance. Well, Ronnie, I think there's four or five teams nationally that are probably you know, have a little more talent. Then after that, I think it's a crap shoot. Uh, you know, Duke, Maryland, Kansas. Uh, I think Oklahoma is very, very good. I saw them play against Connecticut. Maybe Alabama, Cincinnati. But, uh, you know, the NCAA tournament is special. There's more pressure, more intensity. And crazy things happen. Mike Tanguizi, the commissioner of the Big East Conference, joining us here as we wind down Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Mike, thanks for stopping by. Great job again this year. I know you're going to have a good time in New York next week. John Ryan, thank you for all your help. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Nice to see you. Commissioner Mike Tranghese joining us at courtside as the Panthers are rolling on the victory with four and a half minutes remaining in this one. They're doing it from every possible angle right now. Well, the game's opened up, and it's, this is the kind of year it's been for Pitt. A lot of people involved. Chad Johnson, lone senior on the club with the stuff. Nice pass by Mark McCarroll off the bench. And we continue to see Pitt. This is a team that passes the basketball better than 16 assists a game as a team. And Brandon Knight, he's the team leader, makes him go, and a lot of people are very much in the act. Sally checking back in with Briggs, and Brandon even making his foul shots tonight. He's four out of five. Well, what a line he's got tonight, John, with the 15 points. And how many assists you have him with now? I had him with the 14 assists at last count. We'll double check it. Unbelievable. That's an offensive foul on Cafino and a pileup under the Pittsburgh basket. Knight reaching down to grab his left leg. He landed on top of Julius Page, and you hold your breath. He's walking it off, and that's a sigh of relief. And you're telling you're, me. Look at Ben Howland already out there, almost all the way to the baseline, checking him out. Well, he had the tendonitis problems in his leg earlier this year. He's had the problem with his finger. And the last thing the Panthers could afford is for Page or Knight to go down. He's walking okay, just, just a little bit gingerly, but uh, seemed to get up okay. And that is obviously huge for Pitt. 77-55, 4.25 left in the finale at Fitzgerald. 
We've been joined by a couple of guests here. Ron, it's great to always have Mike Trangisi around. That one bounces back into the hands of Page, but they're going to have a shot clock foul. Now they're going to beat it. McCarroll has it. Cofino gets it back and is fouled. It really is, John. I mean, Mike Trangisi has done such an effective job with the Big East football conference, the basketball, and he does it in such an effective manner. He goes all the way back and forth with Dave Gavitt, and then as Dave Gavitt went to the Celtics, he took the reign. He's done just a terrific job over the years. I do like his optimism, too, in yeah. saying 17, maybe. That'd be something. Yeah. And, you know, when you look at it, if somebody gets a couple of wins, you know, down in uh, New York, anything can happen, whether it's a... You know, a BC on a run or a Georgetown or a Rutgers. It, it, it really is going to be fun at Madison Square Garden. It all starts on Wednesday, the Conagra Food 2002 Big East Championship. And Yuri Demetrius says, checked into the Pittsburgh lineup. He's the 10th Panther to play in this game. I like the game Honda Chicino played tonight for West Virginia. Good looking young player. One of his better games of the year. You mentioned he had good numbers in his recent games, good numbers against Pittsburgh earlier in mid-February, and now he has a 15-point night tonight. Moss is 15 as well. The feed to Moss. And Torrey jams it all. The party started a little early for the Panthers. The game's not over yet. I think it has. Mark McCarroll with a couple of nice dishes for Pitt. Moss has that one knocked away. Blocked out of there by Chad Johnson. Yuri Demetrius steps through. They've got three on one at this end. Morris. McCarroll. Wow, it is just open season out here right now. It's highlight time as Pitt is dunking that basketball left and right. Briggs has it knocked out of bounds. but No, it stays inbounds. And there's another block, this time by McCarroll. Julius Page lost his dribble, got it back. And the referee, Patrick, fell down. Patrick Driscoll hit the deck, slipped, but he called the turnover on the carry of the basketball. Well, unfortunately, he's okay. That's, that's, a, that's a full muscle opportunity, but he's got up with a smile. 81-57, it's all Pittsburgh in Fitzgerald's finale. Campus of the University of Pittsburgh. Final night in this building. The new Peterson Events Center will open next year. Well, if you're Pittsburgh, you play the string out. They've played with intensity. West Virginia in this second half. They just have not been able to battle on the boards. Oh, nice shot. By Long Jefino. three by Jefino, who now has matched his freshman career best with 18 points. He liked this homecoming. He sure did. And certainly some bright moments by Hargett as well. But just not the, you know, the inside play to compete effectively in this game and the experience by Pitt too much. Well, they want Demetrius to score, of course. Here's Johnson for three, bending short. And Schifino has the rebound. They've got numbers, three on one. Sally kicks it right back to the middle. That's going to put Schifino on the line. It'll be number three on Ontario left. Second, number two on Ontario left. Schifino back in line with a chance now, Ronnie, to have a new career high. A nice way to come back to the Pittsburgh area and Penn Hills High School where he went to school. That can go either way. You can come back. You can have all your friends and family there. And you're so excited. It's tough to perform. But he's really, right from the beginning, he's really played well in this one. Well, you have him with a career high of 19 points. Target and Shafino, the two freshmen we talked about at the beginning, have combined for 33 points. And Chad Johnson, the senior, leaves the court probably for the final time. He and his mother honored before the game. Got the start on senior night. Had some nice minutes, too. He's had some good plays, and that's the way he's played this year. He comes off. He's been a spark off the bench as well. First collegiate 20-point game for Shafino. I got a feeling we'll see more of them, John. I think so. Long pass to McCarroll. Two on one. He's got Morris on the wing. Whoa! Whoa! everybody on their feet 83 62 Moss still working he has been the one consistent factor for the Mountaineers this entire season he sure has well that was some stuff by McCall how long he's a long player seemed like he left from about 15 John sure did that was a David Thompson type dunk there yeah 
Demetrius decides not to shoot. Illinois is going to shoot, and he'll get a chance to get his name in the scorebook. Let's take a look at this sky-high dunk by McCarroll. Yeah, he leaves, he leaves, he starts the stride there at about 15 and launches that one from seven or eight feet out. Forget about it. Tremendous rise, long arms, and just sent that one down. That was a, a Michael Jordan type deal. So Chapino fouls out of the game. With nice a shot. high 20 points. Gets a round of applause. And they're not going to let Demetrius shoot until we get a sub in the lineup. And oh, we do have a sub. So we're good to go. Now, if Yuri can get on the board, that'll be 10 Panthers scoring in this game tonight. Everybody that's played will have scored. Of course. That's the way it's going tonight, Ronnie. It sure is. Now, it's great when everybody can get involved, especially guys like Yuri that have worked hard and practiced every day, get some minutes, get out there with the bright lights, and get in the box score as well. He's from Glenshaw, PA. One of two for him at the line. The 10 different Panthers have scored as they lead by 20 in the final two minutes. And there's another turnover by West Virginia. Let makes the catch. Behind his back to uh -oh. McCarroll. It's showtime. There's an over-the-top for Moss that's too strong. Racing for the basketball was Jay Hewitt. Good it, hustle. He touched it last. It'll be Pittsburgh ball. Tell you what, you love to see that when you're down like this. Uh, we're going to empty the Panther bench now. Gino Federico will check in. Also, Carlo Dorazio checks in. Federico, Dorazio, come on. The Panthers are going to match their school record with win number 25. They will be 25 and 4. Oh, who would have expected that, John? I don't think anyone would have at the beginning of the season. They lost to Miami in Miami in overtime and driving to the basket to get the field goal. Is Demetrius, 86-64. They lost twice to Notre Dame. They lost here at home to Notre Dame. Their only loss at home this year. Hewitt off the mark. Federico has the rebound. Dorazio up and in, in the box score. 11 Panthers have scored in this game, 88 to 64. Yeah, it's it's a great, great team effort. Yeah, Moss shooting a three rims out. You hate to see it end this way for West Virginia because it has not been a good year. But maybe with the search for a new coach underway, things will get better. How about that? That's five points for Demetrius. 90-64. Final 30 seconds. Foul was called. Second half, John. How an unbelievable second half. Well, it was a tight first half. It was a five-point game, and now it's just blown wide open into a 26-point game. So, so the Panthers have scored 56 points in the second half. And we're going to check their field goal percentage in the second half. Because they have shot lights out, starting with that three-pointer that Brown hit to get it going. Well, the game really opened up right in the start of the second half, and Ben Howland let the throttle out with his team in the second half. They got breaks, and when they have the breaks in, in the numbers, they'll go for it. One more coming up for Tyrone Sally. They are 22 of 29 in the second half. That's unbelievable. It really is. John, a lot of drives, dunks good quality shots, but they've also hit open threes as well. It's really been a clinic here for Pitt. Final 30 seconds ever at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. <laughs> Federico has it slapped out of bounds by Sally. Panthers will keep. Shot clock is off. 90 to 65. Pittsburgh has the lead. And after the game, they will hoist a championship banner, the first since 1988 in Fitzgerald, and the last. Demetrius. Well, he's tied his career high, Ronnie. He's got seven. Well, he's right into it, huh? In the flow, getting some baskets. And West Virginia now will let the clock expire. A disappointing end. We want to wish Gail Catlett nothing but the best in the future. He's been a credit to the Big East and the coaching profession. We will all miss him. Absolutely. A great, great career for Gail Catlett. 
We will miss them in the Big East, but an outstanding effort by Pitt here tonight as they wrap things up at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse in style. They win it going away tonight. A huge win for Pittsburgh. Congratulations both ways. Another big night. Huge double-double for Brandon Knight. And once the second half got rolling, Ronnie, uh, there wasn't much doubt what was going to happen. It really wasn't, John. The fast break, the up-tempo, and you could see Pitt just taking charge. And all of a sudden, the shots were falling. The defense was there, and it was lights out for Pitt as they are on just one of these magical rides this year, John. And you kind of wonder, you know, where this thing's going to end. They're going to be do? a tough team to beat. Well, they scored 58 points in the second half, which I'm sure is their season high. And they put a 92 on the board against the Mountaineers, 92 to 65. You figured the Panthers were going to win this game, but probably not by that big a margin. And now the ceremony begins at midcourt as they will lower the scoreboard and hang the championship banner for the West Division. So you have to say hats off to Pittsburgh. They've matched their school record with 25 wins. They are the team to beat going into the Big East tournament. They absolutely are. It's been a just a storybook season for a team that proves, John, that if you play together as a team, you, you obviously have to have a key player like Brandon Knight, but if you really play team ball, understand your roles, get contributions from a lot of people, sacrifice at the defensive end, this is the kind of thing that could happen. It is all Pittsburgh in the finale, the last game ever at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. The final was not 25 to four, that's 25 wins, four losses. A school record for Pittsburgh. For Ron Perry and our entire ESPN Plus crew here in Pittsburgh, I'm John Sanders. Thanks for watching. It's been a fun night. We say goodbye to Fitzgerald. Good luck to the Panthers in the tournament and in the NCAA. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader.